Hello, my lovely dreamers, and welcome back to my channel. I am always happy, happy to see you again, and welcome to the first episode of Tuesdays. Wine and Crime Unsolved Cases So I decided to start a new playlist in which I'm going to talk about unsolved old cases and each episode will be posted once a week. So, grab yourself a glass of wine. I have mine here. Chin chin. Find yourself a cozy spot. Beautiful, the stunningly beautiful 
young woman Tita Tita opened the door extremely happy and smiling giggling and very happy to see them they hugged each other's kiss on the cheeks and Tita was so happy and telling them about her fiancé she was about to marry her fiancé Kusa Hota so she was so happy and so full of life but suddenly she went pale grabbed her sister's hand and told her that she was feeling really, really terribly sick. Her sister went uh, to the bathroom and brought her a glass of water. But uh, Tita was getting worse and worse, was feeling worse and worse, so um, Jella went downstairs to her husband, who desperately tried to call different doctors, but being Christmas uh, night, uh, no, uh, none of them answered, so they decided to call the ambulance, but it was really, really, um, it was too late. He was already deceased. So, what had really happened? That was one of the biggest scandals in the history of Bucharest of those years. And you will see uh, why. So, who was Tita or Tita? Tita Christescu? She was Miss Romania in 1926. As I have just told you, she was considered to be one of the most beautiful uh, women in Bucharest. She dreamed, was dreaming of becoming an actress and she had previously uh, been to Berlin and tried to act in some movies but without having too much uh, success uh, back in Romania she had some little parts in some plays at a famous theater which um, doesn't exist any longer and um, before becoming Miss uh, Romania she had been married to a man called Sandu Bujor, a <coughs> little businessman who lost everything and after losing everything he had she, she um, divorced him, she left him after her divorce um, and her living being friendly to different rich men to say so um, one of them in particular um, very important figure of that times his name was Liviu Chule and he was a very uh, rich man, owner of um, a factory called Metallica. It was a company in fact. And um, he was an engineer. He was married, of course older than her. And um, he had a wife and two children. The one who introduced her to Liviu Chule was the lawyer Gregorian, who was 
Tella's husband. Tella was Tita's sister. And after an affair of six months, Livio Tulea fell madly in love with her. She was extremely beautiful. He was very rich, as I have told you, and he bought her an apartment, a luxurious apartment, two automobiles, um, different um, expensive gifts as furs and jewelry, and he also supported um, other members of Tita's family, helped them with money, and Tita shared the gifts that he um, uh, used to receive, shared them with her family, so they all had a prosperous life um, out of this uh, business, let's say. This um, had been going on for six years. When um, Tita was killed, he had been, she had been having an uh, affair uh, with uh, Livio Tulei for six years. Six year in years in which she hoped that he would live would leave his family, but this thing didn't, didn't happen. Um, she had a, a very luxurious life. Uh, she gave up on um, uh, acting in 1932. So Tita had a dream life. Expensive restaurants, expensive clothes, uh, luxurious apartment, um, money in the bank, uh, in fact, so Tita had a dream life. Expensive restaurants, expensive clothes, uh, luxurious apartment, um, money in the bank, uh, in fact, when he died, he left um, between three and five million lays, which was uh, quite a fortune back then. Plus the apartment, the automobiles and the jewelry. Uh, Livia Tulay loved her and tried, like Pygmalion, tried to change her, tried to educate her. He made her read books and taught her how to behave herself in certain circumstances in society. And all everyone around her were amazed to see that um, she used to be, uh, her nickname used to be uh, the Little Goose. And uh, they were amazed to see that the little goose changed into a real, a real classy, um, classy lady. But still, in spite of becoming a classy lady, uh, she still had different relationships with different other men who also supported her financially and Olivia Tulay was extremely, extremely possessive and jealous and uh, people used to gossip that he sometimes uh, slept her because he became very, very jealous on her and uh, she had numerous affairs, other affairs she, uh, they used to have a lot of arguments, they argued very often. Uh, she wanted him to uh, divorce his wife, he wanted her to um, uh, give up her uh, other lovers 
and so on um, but uh, at a certain point uh, saying that he would never uh, divorced his wife she decided to um, become the fiance of another man Kuza Hota and they were about to get married uh, um, very soon the next year and this was um, everything happened in uh, 1935 in 1936 um, uh, they were planning to get married Kuza Hota and um, Dica Cristescu at that uh, point, um, Kuza Hota was uh, uh, somewhere abroad, so um, he was never considered a suspect. <sighs> of course, when um, the ambulance arrived, uh, Tita was already deceased, and um, she was taken to the hospital, and then autopsy was performed mm -hmm. and um, a toxicologist um, performed some tests and found out that mm -hmm. she had been poisoned with cyanide and um, a whole scandal had started because the police needed to find out who was responsible for um, for this the young woman she was 28 just faints in front of her sister and dies suddenly so one minute she was smiling she was talking she was uh, kissing and hugging um, her sister and her friend and the next minute she was lying on the bed deceased and of course um, the police started to investigate and the um, servant in the house said that um, the lady of the house had uh, that evening had eaten two chocolates received which the engineer which her uh, lover Livio Chule had previously um, given to her in a box and she had her uh, laxative which she used to take every evening and the police decided that they need to investigate this from three perspectives she had taken her own life she was killed or it was an accident so the first point had no logic because Tita had everything she wanted and the police concluded that someone who um, is, was planning to take his or her life would never um, would never take have taken a, a laxative pill for what to it just didn't make any sense they also tried to find out if it was an accident and if at the chemist where her laxative were pre prepared uh, where some kind of uh, accident and uh, someone mixed uh, cyanide into her pills but uh, uh, they didn't find any evidence and they concluded that someone injected cyanide in the chocolates in the chocolates that she had 
previously received from um, Liu Chulei. From the chocolate box were missing only two. The two pieces that Tita had eaten. The servant also told them that she was extremely happy that evening, that um, she was listening to the radio and um, when she, the servant, entered the room to uh, give her the box of chocolates, she was listening to the radio, she was listening music to the radio and dancing um, in the room, very, very happy and smiling. And <coughs> the servant also said that Olivia Chule had um, paid her a visit that evening. So, the main suspect in this case was Livio Chule. But the police also um, followed another uh, link uh, as her father was the chief of the communist party back then the little communist party which was illegal um, at that time who would have known and they also investigated the possibility of her being a spy and being uh, reduced to silence by someone I don't know some uh, so they thought it was also a political um, affair, to say so. Mm. The newspapers in Bucharest back then wrote about this and only about this. The journalists followed Livy Chile everywhere and uh, people uh, began talking and gossiping how he was a, uh, an influent man, very rich and everything was analyzed and discussed and no secret was left outside So Livio Chule was accused of killing his mistress out of jealousy, because she was about to get married to another man who, by the way, um, didn't even attend her funeral. Uh, he uh, returned to Bucharest uh, after 10 days. He was... I didn't really love her. And at the trial... Um, Uh, Tita's father and her sister and her sister's husband accused Livio Chule of uh, um, being a murderer and um, it was strange because they um, received a lot of money and they received a lot of money but they wanted more uh, from Livia Chule. But Livia Chule had uh, the best lawyers in Bucharest and he was acquitted for lack of evidence. So everyone still thought that he, he was the one who committed this. He was the one who had given her the chocolate. He was the one who was extremely jealous. He was the one who used to fight with her from time to time. Um, 
So everyone in Bucharest considered that um, she was a victim, an abused woman who um, was whose life was taken by her uh, very rich lover who was extremely jealous. And everyone thought that Livy Tulay got away with murder because he had the means to pay the best uh, lawyers in Bucharest. And he continued to wear this scarlet letter in his uh, chest all of his life. Uh, he was acquitted for lack of evidence, but still, all of his life, up to a certain point, he was considered um, the author of this. And this was considered an unsolved case. Olivia Jule was absolved for la um, lack of evidence and the police didn't have any um, tip to follow didn't uh, weren't able to find out type of evidence Tica was buried without a religious service because, of course, her father was a, a member of the Communist Party back then, although he had a restaurant and he really enjoyed the lifestyle his daughter used to provide for him. And many years passed and passed and the case was still unsolved everyone forgot about it except probably Livio Tulane's family who continued to uh, live um, carrying this burden and being judged and many many years Many years after everything had happened, about 35 years later, a priest decided to confess, to break the oath of keeping the secret of confession, and confessed himself that servant in um, Tica's house back then. Maria Such was her name. Before um, leaving this world, at her last confession, told him that she was the one who poisoned Tica. The, the girl whom Tica offered the job and paid her poisoned her. Nobody would have ever suspected the servant of the house. Nobody. And if she hadn't confessed at a certain point, I think this would have remained unsolved forever. She said that she was jealous. She was jealous because Tiza was just like her not an aristocrat. She wasn't very smart or very educated, but she
she had the chance to be too beautiful. She was too beautiful and she had everything and she was too happy and the servant became jealous. Jealous of her success, jealous of her happiness, uh, jealous of her being so beautiful. She had everything, she said, and I had nothing. She said, a uh, quote, she had everything and I had nothing. And quote. So, in the long run, Tita Cristescu was poisoned out of jealousy, but it wasn't the jealousy of a lover. It was the jealousy of another woman who would have loved to have her life, who would have loved to be just like her, but couldn't. And the servant also confessed that he, she had uh, stolen some pieces of jewelry and some money. So, that was my story. I am um, very fascinated by old cases. Back in um, times, old times, and this was, this was the case of Miss Romania, 1926 who was poisoned and lost her life at 28 years old because some other woman considered that she was too lucky, too happy, too beautiful and she couldn't stand this. Thank you very much for watching. I'm waiting for you on Sunday at True Crime Sunday and if you enjoyed this episode of Wine, Tuesdays Wine and Crime and Salt Cases I'm waiting for you next Tuesday Thank you very much for watching See you next time Chin chin